Guitar loop and are you ready? Last month I made a video in which I did a little guitar looping and you all wondered how on earth I did that. I know. I'm gonna give you the ins and outs of the gear I use, my philosophy behind guitar looping and more. So let's jump right in. I'm using the Acoustasonic, the new Fender Stratocaster model, and I'm plugging it directly into my computer, into my interface, which is an RME Fireface. And the interface is connected to my computer, my PC, which we see over here, and it's feeding the guitar signal into my DAW. A lot of technical terms already. It's not that complicated. I'm using a program called Ableton Live in which I make music. Whenever I write a song or make music, I do it inside that program. And then I figured, why not do guitar looping with that program as well? So my guitar is coming directly through my monitors into my ears and into your ears as well. So how does it work? What we see over here, all the boxes are basically the boxes we see over here as well. And I can select different tracks. You see the highlighted track moves on to whatever track I select. When I long press that track, the track arms, you see the red button over there, the record button. Right now I'm starting to record an intro because that one is selected. If I record an audio inside one of these boxes, it is a clip. The first thing I played was three simple chords, C sharp minor, E major seventh, and A major seventh, with sometimes a G sharp, on top and I basically ripped this off from the song Speak Your Heart by Liz Wright. Good inspiration I call it. <laughs> okay I'm now recording my first layer. One, two, three, four. see the audio I recorded over here and it's now playing. It stopped automatically because I pressed this button fixed length and it's set to four bars. So after four bars it stops. You can also control it with a foot switch which you can put into this so you stop whenever you decide. But it's always snapped to the grid and that's one thing I love about using a DAW because there is a grid and the grid is just a very nice guideline for you to record over. So that's basically what it is. So now this is looping and I select the next track. So I select doubles, we see the arm button and I can just just noodle around and whenever you feel like it's time to hit the second layer, you record it. And I'm just barring my index finger on the middle two strings. All the tabs are available at my Patreon page, by the way, if you want to check it out. It's linked below. Um, so bar nine, um, fret nine and nine on the middle two strings. And then I'm alternating the pattern to fret 11 on the D string. And then do the same one string up. So it's still playing and you can noodle. Time to record. And I press the record button and it just starts on the one, three, four, and. There we are. So now we recorded the thing into the DOM. And one particular cool thing about this is the second track I recorded it's a little bit panned to the left. So it's coming a little bit more out of the left speaker. That's your left. Um, and the way I do this is by simply just dragging this knob a little bit to the left. So this one is in the center. Let's solo. You see, one speaker. And this way you can create way more space into your recordings. Beautiful. This one is looping. Now it's time to add some drums and this Acoustasonic features a nice feature if you put it in the middle position and turn this one all the way down. We have some nice body percussions and we're going to use that. So I select the percussion track and let's see. 
Now there's a lot of reverb. So that's one cool thing, you can just program each track. So on this percussion track there is a reverb plugin and a lot of compression. So this helps making the percussive a little bit snappier and also the spacious of the reverb just sounds cool. And you also need to turn the volume down because it's clipping. It's louder than when I play. So halfway down and then we are ready. So I usually do this all the time when I'm just recording and I have to think about all these things. Switch to the middle position, volume down and then record the percussion. Is it, if it goes wrong, you gotta do it again. <laughs> but you never see that because I cut it out. Okay, so we're rolling. And you can just noodle. After you record it, adjust some levels if you want. You can. I want more drums. Hmm, let's turn it on. Delay on the drums. Yeah, if you like this, please hit that like button. It's a lot of, it means a lot. It's free for you, it means a lot to me. Thank you so much. I had this gear before I started to use this for guitar looping. I just had Ableton Live. I bought it four or five years ago and I've been using it ever since as my main production tool. And then a buddy of mine, he showed me this tool, the Push, and he used it for production, playing piano on it, playing bass lines, and he was creating just his music with this tool. So I bought the first version of this, second hand, just for fun. And I was just playing around with it. And then I thought, hmm, can I do some guitar looping with my DAW instead of with a pedal? Because I can also add drums if I want. Let's say a drum track over here. And if you want to create a full song with guitar looping instead of just a guitar, the options are pretty much endless. But there's a very steep learning curve, so I really do not suggest anyone buying this gear if you want to do guitar looping. So I just created a looping kit over here, track 7 in this case. Let's say we want to uh, add some more drums, because the drums from the Acoustic is not cool enough. <laughs> uh, I press arm and I hit note, and then I can just record. Three, four. Magic, El Magico. All right, next up in the looping were the power chords because I can see from the track. So I select the power chord track, long press to arm. Again, you see the red button lighting over there. Now I'm moving up to a little bit more fat sound. For the power chord. So we were rolling and then we we're playing and just
this last track I record is a little bit panned to that way, to the right speaker, that way for you. So we create space, it's basically the same part as the lower doubles. But then higher. Right, so awesome. layer whatever And that's basically how I did all my guitar looping videos as well. I made seven guitar looping videos in total. Check them out uh, if you like this stuff. To me it became second nature, like controlling the MIDI device, controlling Ableton Live. I know the programs inside out, so it's really, it's fun for me. But if you're new to this, I won't suggest anyone buying this to start guitar looping. Because it's just too complicated. It's too much hassle. You have to connect everything the right way. And, but for me, it's already here. I use this stuff all the time for not guitar looping purposes as well. So for me, it's logical to use this because I have this stuff. Find your own ways, I should say. But because so many of you were interested in my methods, I figured I'd make this video. Also, if you like what I do, if you like my teaching, I made two guitar courses. One for beginners learn practice play and one for intermediate players next level playing. If you just want to have the full package instead of loose videos, you can check that out. It's a lot of fun, I guess. Let's do some soloing. Mm -hmm. 